She was 81 years old at the time of her last horrific crime. Sofia Zhukova is the oldest serial killer in the world. She killed three people, including children. Today, we'll tell you about her crimes and why it took so long to catch her. The most dramatic moment was Zhukova's face-to-face -face meeting with family members of the victims. It shocked everyone in the courtroom. But to understand how the old woman became a callous lunatic, let's look at her past. Sofia Zhukova was born in 1939 in the remote village of Zvyagino in the Nizhny Novgorod region. The fate of this woman was tragic from childhood. Without a proper education, she was forced to work hard as a laborer in the local meatpacking plant. Sofia had a strong physique and a hoarse voice beyond her years, for which she was nicknamed Sonia Raspi. Her wrinkled face and stern gaze betrayed her bitterness toward the world. The bitter experience of losing several children and hard physical labor hardened her character, making her cruel and cynical. She settled in Khabarovsk, in one of the blocks of flats in the workers' village of Berezovka. Neighbors noticed her cold-bloodedness and aversion to pets. Zhukova was also said to have a tendency to alcoholism. Therefore, the neighbors tried to avoid this dark woman with a mysterious past. It was felt that the quiet pensioner was hiding something evil. For many years, Sofia Zhukova lived a monotonous and hard life in Khabarovsk. But in 2005, a real tragedy happened to her that changed her life forever. In 2005, Sofia Zhukova's husband of more than 30 years, Pavel, died unexpectedly. This came as a real shock to her, as Pavel was the only close person in her life. After the sudden loss, Sofia changed a lot. She became dark, withdrawn, and bitter. She stopped communicating not only with neighbors, but also with her husband's relatives, practically did not leave the house. Her appearance changed as well. She always wore the same old clothes. Her hair was messy and uncombed. Her face and hands were dirty. Obviously, Sophia suffered a lot from loneliness and fell into a deep depression. She drank a lot of cheap alcohol, stopped taking care of herself in the apartment. The apartment became a desolate place full of garbage and empty bottles. Strange sounds and smells from the apartment frightened the neighbors. It seemed that Sophia had finally gone mad with grief and loneliness, having lost the meaning of life after the death of her husband. It was probably this that drove her to commit all those terrible atrocities. The horror it brought to life in the peaceful village of Berezovka began with the disappearance of young Nastya Aleksenko. On December 14, 2005, 11-year-old Nastya Aleksenko disappeared after school in the village of Berezovka. The girl was walking home with a friend. They went into the entrance together. But Nastia never made it to her grandparents' apartment, where she lived during the week. Concerned relatives immediately contacted the police. A large-scale search for the missing schoolgirl began, involving both relatives and volunteers. But no trace of Nastia was found. Then, investigators summoned 66-year-old Sofia Zhukova, Nastia's neighbor, for questioning. Zhukova said that the girl sometimes visited her when the pensioner's husband was alive. Together, they would draw and drink tea. But on the day of her disappearance, Nastia just walked up the stairs and then ran outside to her friends. Soon, pieces of presumably human flesh were found under the balconies of the house. And on December 27th, the remains were found in the garbage dump, identified as those of Nastya Alexienko. Suspicion fell on Zhukova. After the death of Nastya Alexienko in 2005, life in the village of Berezovka gradually returned to normal. But a few years later, another grim event occurred here, this time related to Sofia Zhukova. In March 2013, her 77-year-old relative Anastasia Mikheva moved into Zhukova's house in the Berezovka settlement. The woman had sold her apartment in Khabarovsk and was about to move in with her daughter in Moscow. But on March 9th, Mikheva disappeared without a trace. When contact with Mikheva was lost, 
Her relatives reported her missing to the police. Investigations quickly revealed that on March 9, the day the pensioner disappeared, the postman delivered a pension to Jakova and Mikieva. And Jakova claimed that Mikieva had taken the money, packed her things, and gone to her relatives in Primori. Although, as it later turned out, Mikieva had no relatives there. When traces of the missing woman's blood were found in Zhukova's apartment, she gave an unconvincing explanation. She said they had quarreled, Mikiva's nose bled from the pressure, and she splattered blood all over the apartment. Eagle-eyed neighbors, however, saw Zhukova taking Mikiva's things and pieces of furniture to the dumpster after she disappeared. And they noticed suspicious blood-like stains near the garbage cans, the police suspected a lie, but could not prove Jukova's involvement. In the absence of direct evidence, she managed to avoid arrest with clever excuses. The disappearance of Anastasia Makiva remained unsolved. Two years later, however, Jukova committed another crime. In January 2015, Jukova took the life of 62-year-old janitor Vasily Shiliaktich, after an argument with his companion, Natalia, over drinking, the man decided to rent a temporary apartment and contacted Zhukova. She agreed to let Shliaktish stay in her apartment for 10,000 rubles a month. On January 28th, Shliaktish disappeared after not going to work or contacting her for several days in a row. Concerned, Natalia filed a police report about his disappearance. On the night of January 28, 29, Zhukova's neighbors heard muffled noises coming from her apartment that sounded like axe blows. On the morning of January 29, the same neighbors observed Zhukova carrying a heavy bag out of the front door and heading toward the garbage cans. A search of Zhukova's apartment revealed numerous traces of blood, including on the blade of the axe. Zhukova herself stated that Shliaktik tried to attack her and that she hit him in self-defense. In the absence of direct evidence of Zhukova's involvement in the murder, she was subsequently released. However, evidence soon surfaced that Zhukova had tried to dispose of Shliaktik's remains by dumping them piece by piece in a landfill. Given the two previous disappearances of people connected to Zhukova, the police had every reason to arrest her. This led to the discovery of Zhukova's series of murders and her prosecution. At the time of her arrest in 2015, Zhukova was already 81 years old. Initially, she was charged only with killing 62-year-old janitor Vasily Flyaktich in January of that year. But already in prison, Zhukova was spilling the beans to her cellmates about her past crimes. Over a cup of tea, she recounted how, many years ago, she strangled her 77-year-old friend, Anastasia Mikiva, in a fit of rage. After the murder, Zhukova dismembered the body and then threw the pieces into garbage cans near her home. Zhukova also recounted how she once killed eight-year-old Nastya Alexenko because the girl was screaming too loudly and running around the yard, annoying an elderly neighbor with her games. I was fed up with this girl and her screaming, so I silenced her once and for all," Zhukova said cynically. She threw the schoolgirl's remains in pieces out the window to the dogs. At the trial, the 81-year-old defendant behaved defiantly, heckling witnesses and mocking the victims. At the mention of the victims during the trial, Zhukova's mood changed dramatically for the better, she smiled and laughed audibly. And when she realized she was laughing too loudly, she covered her mouth with her hand. The court eventually found Zhukova sane and guilty of the triple murder. However, in December 2020, she contracted the coronavirus. The outcome was predictable. She died of COVID-19 in a prison hospital never having waited for the announcement of her well-deserved sentence. 